Next up, Tony Jeske will give us a slideshow as he tells us about the two drones he has used on his ranch to help identify management problems and to keep a photographic record of changes over the years. Tony and his parents own and operate Black Diamond Ranch, 300 acres of hay and forage winding along the west bank of the Kettle River in the Christian Valley. They've got a lot going on, from beef and sheep to poultry and garlic, all inside a complex patchwork of fields that they graze and irrigate and manage for floods. Okay, I, uh, I bought my first drone, aerial photography drone in 2013. Uh, the drone itself flew fine, but the limiting factor really for its use was the image transmission from the camera back to me on the ground. Uh, the technology for high definition video transmission did get better over time, but it was very expensive in the thousands of dollars of range and heavy. Uh, last year, Andrew came out and mapped our farm. And after I saw his Mavic Mini, I had to have one. So this is what we've done. Um, we have uh, very, very, very variable soils on our farm. I've noticed that uh, the drone can be used to see where our bad areas are. If there is an issue below, like on the left of the screen here and in the center, uh, it really shows up. This is actually a field of uh, fall rye and uh, clover. Um, uh, this is another example of variability in our soil showing up. Um, this field is, I was a little behind with the water on this field. So I think the effect is a little exaggerated. It didn't look that bad when you actually walk the field. And this is uh, barley and peas. Uh, a drone, in my opinion, it doesn't replace checking your fields, but it is a tool that can give you a different perspective on what's going on. Um, with this information from the drones, we can uh, apply manure with precision to the battery. On this circle, uh, the half that has manure on it is basically a wash sand or was when we started farming it. Um, we actually used some of the topsoil here when we first bought the place to make cement. It worked. It was perfect wash sand. Um, but with the drone, we can record where we put the vineyard. So next year, we don't over apply in the same spot. And uh, yeah, on our farm, uh, manure is limited in supply, so it's important we use it efficiently. On this field, uh, in the fall, my pump starts to suck air, just a little bit. But um, you can see the rings showing up where the air is escaping the pivot and under applying the water. Uh, from looking at it on the ground, these rings don't always show up. Like they're, they're not noticeable, but from above they really show up. Uh, we also have used the drones for checking our cows. Uh, I think if we still had a range, the drones would work really good 
for finding cows on the range in the fall if your tree density on the range isn't too high because the trees will reduce the range you can go with the drone. I find the cows really don't like the drone though, so you can't really get that close to them. Here we've got our sheep. Um, they also don't like the drone, but you can check on them, see where they are, make sure they're all there. Um, you can see they are looking up. In theory, you could use the drone to herd your animals around. There is a farmer, I believe in New Zealand, that has a drone that actually uh, uh, emit a, a barking dog sound. And he uses that to move his uh, thousands of sheep. Uh, the drone also works good for uh, keeping records of where we've grazed. This field is actually just about to start its second uh, grazing for the season. Once we get up to the fence here, it'll be onto the second grazing. It went up, down, pattern like that, and then came back this way. So it's almost on its second grazing. Um, I also use the drone to uh, keep a record of uh, the, how many bales we get off the fields. It works best for small fields. Um, this one is about, that's cut there is about uh, seven acres, probably in total. It would probably work great on larger fields if you stitch the photos together. Um, otherwise, they can get a little hard to count. Now, the reason I bought the drone, the first drone in 2013, was to try and document the changes on our farm. Now, the quality of the photos isn't great. Um, the technology just wasn't there at, a, at the time at a reasonable price. But here, you, um, you can see these are actually dry land fields right now. We found with the wheel lines, we could, and our sandy soils, we could not get across the fields fast enough. And this was, this was in 2016. Here's the same view almost in 2020. Um, some of the trees are missing. Looks a little different. Uh, there's a few pivots up now. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for today. Well, that's great, uh, Tony. So I think that that record keeping is 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 one of the the most important ones, especially now that record keeping is mandated by the law. It sounds like a, a fun way to to keep all of those yield records. Especially over time, it'll be interesting to see how the yields go up. So yeah. you're uh, you're. The Mavic Mini is, is suiting your purpose on your 300 acres? Yes, I think it works good. Um, it's a very basic drone, but for us right now, it's, it works fine. Well, that's great. Well, thanks so much, uh, Tony.